This is a production of Cornell University. Welcome to this Florecast episode on understanding composts, vermicomposts, and teas. The purpose of this Florecast is to introduce the listener to several key concepts related to using compost, vermicompost, teas, and extracts, as well as to describe their use in certified organic production systems in the greenhouse. Composts are simply organic matter that has been subjected to decomposition in a controlled process. Composts can be useful in substrate production because they can be a source of microbes, for example, for suppressing root-borne diseases. Composts have a high cation exchange or nutrient holding capacity, and the compost itself can be a slow-release nutrient source. In container production, mature compost should always be used. Immature compost can be high in ammonia and volatile organic compounds, which can be damaging to plants. In certified organic greenhouse production, composts are allowed according to National Organic Program NOP guidelines, so long as the following criteria are met. The compost should use approved feedstocks, which include many plant and animal materials that are not contaminated with prohibited substances such as herbicides. Minimum temperature requirements must be met during the composting process. One thing when using composts in container production are that all composts are not created equal. Therefore, one cannot assume that all composts can be used in container production, and it is important for a grower to test different compost sources as well as batches to ensure that the material is suitable. I like to think of compost using the sausage analogy. That is, all sausages are not the same. Uh, sausages will have different feedstocks uh, or meat products used in making them, as well as different curing processes, and ultimately that's going to affect whether you have an Oscar Mayer wiener or a very nice Polska kielbasa. There are some steps that you can check to make sure that your compost is suitable for container production, and I do recommend that you test each batch from a supplier to ensure its suitability. Now let's move on to talk about vermicompost. Very simply, vermicompost can be thought of as worm-worked waste. Worms will digest and fragment the feedstock into finely divided materials. Vermicompost is not just the poop or the castings from worms, but also the other organic matter that the worms have divided up. Vermicompost can be a useful material because it is, because it is finely divided, it is enriched in nutrients. Um, it contains more soluble nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium than a standard compost. An example of vermicomposting that's done on an industrial scale is available at WormPower LLC. In the process, the manure solids from a dairy operation are collected. These solids are then brought into a warehouse where they are thermophilically composted in static piles. This then serves as the feedstock for the final step, which is feeding this material to millions of red wiggler earthworms. According to the National Organic Program guidelines, vermicompost is allowed in certified organic production so long as the following guidelines are met. The vermicompost material should again be made from allowed feedstock materials and the duration of the vermicomposting process should be 6 to 12 months for outdoor windrows, 2 to 4 months for indoor container systems, 2 to 4 months for angled wedge systems, and 30 to 60 days for continuous flow reactors. Now let's move on to talk about compost teas. Compost teas are liquids that are made by brewing or steeping compost in water. This process serves to transfer microbes, fine particulate organic matter, and soluble chemical components such as plant available nutrients from the compost to the liquid. The benefits of compost tea are that it contains some nutrients. As well, compost teas can contain a beneficial microbial community which might be used for the control of foliar and root diseases. These microbes might also be involved in enhancing nutrient cycling. Growers may question whether or not compost teas work, and the answer again is it all depends. Returning to the sausage analogy, compost teas can be prepared in many different ways, and they can also have many different feedstocks and additives that are used. Whether or not you get a beneficial microbial community as an end result will depend on all of the processes that take place up to that point. 
One of the things to decide when preparing compost teas is whether or not to actively aerate it. A tea is what we call the material when we do use this active process to add air or oxygen during brewing. This is done to promote the population of aerobic microbes. We refer to the material as an extract when a passive process is followed, that is oxygen is not introduced during the steeping process. This might be referred to as a non-aerated or passively aerated extract. With extracts there is no need for specialized equipment and one advantage of an extract is that it has a much longer shelf life than a compost tea. In certified organic production, teas and extracts can be used if certain criteria are met. If the material is prepared without compost additives, it can be used on edible crops without restriction. If the material is prepared with additives, then it can be applied without restriction if the compost tea production system and materials have been pre-tested to meet EPA guidelines for a bacterial indicator of fecal contamination. If the above criteria are not met, then the particular tea or extract must be applied 90 or 120 days prior to harvesting an edible crop. 90 days in the case that the tea or extract material does not come into direct contact with the produce, and 120 days prior if the material doesn't come in contact with the particular produce. A reminder that organic producers should always consult their certification agents before purchasing or using products. As well, always conduct your own in-house trials with new materials. Until next time. This has been a production of Cornell University, on the web at cornell.edu.